All right, everybody. How are you doing? How are you doing? Tell me how you're doing, everybody. This is my first time going live. This is episode number 400. Yes, 400. So how are you guys? How are you imaginary people that are sitting here feeling? Thank you. This is amazing. It's almost as if I pressed the button and made that happen. (laughs) Well, folks, this is episode number 400, literally 400. I didn't even realize when I started doing podcasting almost seven years ago that I would be doing this 400 times. You know, I have another podcast that I've done, I think, 66 times. So basically, I've done, you know, and and before I started doing this podcast, I had another podcast that I just kind of played around with. and. You know, I, I don't even have those episodes anymore. I just kind of played around with it. I wasn't really serious about it until I started doing the podcast, this podcast, uh, starting at Podbean. And it's episode number 400. It's amazing how when you get to the O's, when you get to 100, 200, 300, 400, when you get to the O's, just like with your age, when you get to the O's in your age, you start to look back and 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 you start to reflect on the things that happened, the things that got you there, the things that inspired you to do it in the first place. And doing this seven years almost, it just, it's just, I look at the number on the screen right now, it says episode number 400. And I'm absolutely fascinated with the fact that this is, I've done this 400 times. I'm 51 years old. I'll be 52 this month, at the end of this month. My birthday and this podcast birthday are actually pretty close together. And this is one of those times, the 400th episode in your 52nd year of life, when you look back and you kind of reflect on things, especially things that end with the O's. 400 episodes. And it's a really weird time right now in the country because you don't even know who to trust anymore. Every time you turn on social media, (laughs) Every time you turn it on, you see people fighting with each other. I remember when I got on Twitter the first time in 2009, that was some fun stuff, man. It was fun. You got an opportunity to meet people and talk to people you never would have met in the first place. People you never would have run across in the first place. You can make friends that absolutely positively would not have happened in the real world. And some of them you actually cherish. Some of the people I met on Facebook and Twitter are actually pretty cool. But as a 51, almost 52 year old guy, and as someone who's done 400 episodes of this, and someone who's been on social media all this time, you realize when you look back and you reflect on things, the same way I'm reflecting on doing 400 episodes of this podcast, I look back and you realize, I look at it and I see some of the people that I saw on Facebook that I knew And with the current climate, I sat back and I watched people that have been in my house that were friends of mine. And I started noticing that there was a level of cruelty to some of these people that I knew that I didn't even know was possible. I broke bread with some of these people. I I was good friends with some of these people. And oh my goodness gracious. Some of the things I saw written down and typed out on Facebook absolutely shocked me. It made you kind of, it's one of those things where you try to figure out whether or not you actually knew or know the person that is typing in or typed in the stuff you just saw. Like I said, when you get to a certain age, you look back and you reflect on things and you try to see, was I wrong then or was there a change over the course of time? Because we all change. I know I've changed. I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. 20 years ago or 30 years ago when I was 20. Because as you get older, you get a filter. Everything that comes into your mind, everything that comes into you hits a filter of your experience. And the older you get, the more there is to the tapestry that makes up who you are. And when you're 20, you're just kind of living for the moment. Well, how can I enjoy this? How can I enjoy that? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And all of this, I'm going to join that. I'm going to jump on top of this woman. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And as you get older, you start realizing and you start seeing the consequences of things. And you have this need, this desire to try to impart knowledge on the people that you meet that are younger than you. 
<laughs> I told the story before a long time ago, and it was um it was a little while. It was a while ago. My nephews are they're adults now, but when I was younger, if I was hanging out with them during the course d- during this during what there was going on at the time, I wouldn't even have thought anything anything of it. I would have just joined in. Had one of my nephews was playing a video game. And I wasn't paying close attention to him. He was just playing his video game, basketball on the big screen TV. Wasn't paying attention. And I walked into the room and I was like, oh, man, that looks kind of real. Now, the games look infinitely more real now than they did 15 years ago or 12 or whatever number of years ago. But I was like, man, that's pretty good. Because it sounded like, because they used the voice of the actual commentators, it sounded like he was he was watching the basketball game. And I'm going, the basketball's on now? What? And basketball wasn't on. Now he was playing the video game. So I sat down. I'm watching the game, and he's he's he looks like he's really good. He's kicking the butt of this game. I'm like, man, this kid's good, man. Oh, that's great. That's kind of cool. And he turns the game. He pauses. Uncle, I'm gonna go upstairs. I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta get something real quick. All right, if you want to play the game, go ahead. I, I got a big lead. It's okay. You can go ahead. You ain't gonna mess nothing up. Okay, he goes upstairs, right? And I'm not really a gamer. I was a gamer. See, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when there weren't games. So, <laughs> you know, so the people that are gamers now people that are playing the video games now don't realize that people my age were gamers before they were born so you know i had atari 1600 or 2600 i forgot which one it was but it was just lines and sticks and dots when i got my first video game and i'm watching this and the the players actually look like the damn basketball players so he goes upstairs and i'm looking at the game and i I play i'm starting playing with the with the machine i'm of course horrible because i don't know what the x does the y does i don't know what the triggers do i'm playing around oh so this is how you dribble okay you put the thing you push this and he dribbles okay how do you how do you okay well i'm I'm gonna pull this thing here okay he goes okay that's left that's right okay 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 how's he okay he dribbles like this okay okay i'm trying to learn how to play the damn game so I start going into the menu of the game and I look around and I notice that, oh man, this, this is pretty interesting. You could actually build your own player or or pick a player that you want to represent or build your own teams. So basically you can literally just find the best player and just give, you know, he his, he's rated at 99 speed and 85 strength and 99 knowledge. And you can have the best player because you're the one building the game. And then I noticed, keep in mind, at the time, I wasn't paying much attention to video games. I noticed that what you could also do, you could also adjust how good the computer played. You could adjust that. Ooh, cool. Right? Now, what I started noticing is, okay, hold on. He's playing this video game, okay, and he's kicking the video game's butt. Cool. Huh. And I noticed he gave himself the strongest player. Huh. And I noticed you could adjust the strength of the video game playing him back. Huh. And I could hear him upstairs, and I know he's not coming right back down. So I started playing around in the menus, and I noticed I could actually crank up how good the computer was and i could actually take his player and weaken him so i took his player and i made his player average and i took the computers and i made the computer play at pro bowl not pro bowl because it was basketball all-star level and then i took his remote control and i put it right back down on the pillow i put it right back down on the pillow hey walking how you doing uh Hello to you too, my brother. And uh, I, so I put I put his uh I put his pillow down. I put put his uh, thing back down on the pillow. And I sat there and I waited for him. I waited for him. I go, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'll wait. He comes down the steps. He's bouncing. He's happy. He sits down. He picks up the remote control. Oh, what am I talking about right now? What I'm talking about right now is uh, this is my 400th episode. And what I'm talking about right now is that as I got older, I started, started getting into the habit. Of instead of just enjoying experiences, I started to talk about how as you get older, you start to try to impart knowledge on younger people. And what I was talking about to answer your question um, is um, my nephew was playing a video game and he was playing it so he could always win. And I knew that was a bad thing. And that's the story I'm telling right now. So that's exactly what's going on. He was playing the video game and he set it up so he could win. So he comes back downstairs. Uh, How old is he? He's, geez, he's pushing 30 now i'm that old (laughs) 
He's pushing 30, literally. Are you, are you a gamer? Are you a gamer? Walking Undead. Well, with a name like Walking Undead, I'm assuming you got to be a gamer. There's no way in the world you're not a, you're not a gamer. All right. Is it, it's really kind of a big thing um, to to be a gamer. I used to be a gamer when I was younger. Um, and, and before you before you before you uh, before you showed up uh, listening to this program, essentially what I was telling people was I was old enough to remember when gaming was just Atari 2600. That's all I had. And everything was dots, sticks. <laughs> that's, that's all it was. And, you know, and so I'm, I'm even now, even though I'm on the internet all the time, I'm still just astounded by what I see. You dig what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go back to what I was saying there. So, so what I'm, so, so what I'm dealing with here is, so my nephew comes back and he's, he's, he sees the game and He's playing the game and he does not understand what's going on because he was winning, 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 winning. And then all of a sudden it started to become a little more difficult than he expected. It became more difficult than he expected. He had a 15 point lead when he went to the bathroom. Then when he came back downstairs, all of a sudden, wait a second, hold on. The computer started catching up to him. He had a 10 point lead. Then it was a five point lead. And he's confused by what the hell's going on. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. He's like, what's going on? And he pauses the game and he goes inside the menu and he notices. What does he notice? He notices that I had cranked down the ability of his ability. And I had cranked up the ability of the computer. And he goes, what you do that for? What's going on? Why'd you do that? What'd you do that for? said, I wanted to teach you a lesson, boy. And I wouldn't let him change it. I wouldn't let him change. I said, no, 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 no. You're going to play it like this, buddy. You're going to play it just like this. Oh, come on, man. No, 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 no. I want to teach you something. Because he was playing it. He had to set up the win. So he's playing it. And what started to happen was it got really tight. It's the fourth quarter of the game, and he's up by one point. They're trading baskets. He can't stop the computer. The computer can't stop him. He's sitting there. He's sweating. He's he's losing. He's out of breath. But he wound up winning the game. He wound up winning the game. Out of breath, sweaty, sitting there. Wound up winning the game. And he looks back at me, and I go, see? What'd you do that for, man? I said, Let me, you were playing the game. You were just trying to kill some time. And you were playing the game in a way that, you know, wasn't doing anything. You, you weren't even you weren't even engaged with it. You were just kind of looking at the game, looking around the room. You went up to the bathroom. I changed the game and made it a little bit tougher for you. You actually had to work for that win. How does it feel? Oh, oh. it was kind of fun. It was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. It was fun because you earned it. Yeah. Now, granted, granted, the second I walked out of the room, he cranked it right back to where it was and began winning games by 80 points. But you get the point. This is episode 400. And what do you do? You go back and you reflect on things. You look at things. Now, anybody who's been listening to me or been following me on social media, you know what the situation is regarding... um, me going to the hospital recently. I rode in an ambulance for the first time in a long time, a long time. And I talked about it on the pod. But when you look about what's going on right now, you start to see people suffering right now. You could have your entire life completely destroyed because of your medical bills. That's a fact. It can happen to you. One night in the hospital, one night in the hospital, if you get sick or you fall down a flight of steps or something bad happens to you, one night in the hospital, you know how much that's going to cost you? $15,000. One night in the hospital. Even if it's one night in the hospital where nothing really bad happens to you, nothing bad happens to you, you're not really, really sick. You just need to be fixed right now. You you, You don't have a deadly disease. You're not, your life is not threatened. None of that happens. But- $15,000. Ambulance ride, $1,200. 
I've got friends from the UK right now <laughs> who literally will call me up and they will say, hey, man, uh, you know where I come from? Uh, we pay for it in our taxes, but it doesn't, you know, they actually give you a voucher to ride home. And, you know, nobody I know has gotten their life ruined by, by, a, by a hospital bill. It doesn't happen here. My friends in Canada, hey, nothing happens here, man. You no, know, nothing happens to us because of a hospital bill. Doesn't happen to us at all. Nothing happens to us. We have hospital bills, but it's just it's a couple of dollars, man. And it just amazes me what happens when something beyond your control happens. And all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, all I did was fall down the steps. Through no fault of my own. All I did was get sick through no fault of my own. And you got a $15,000 hospital bill if you stay in the hospital one night. I had a relative that stayed in the hospital for 10 days. I had another relative that stayed in the hospital for a month. They will never in their entire lives. It is literally impossible for them to cover that bill. If you have a college loan, it's impossible for many people to cover that bill. You owe $100,000. You owe $200,000. I had a friend of mine just tell me he has a hospital bill for $750,000. Most people make a million dollars in their lifetime if they have a good job. You think you're going to pay a $750,000 bill off? I don't. <laughs> you know? It's just an amazing thing. And I often wondered why it is the way it is. I couldn't even imagine a situation where I would personally want to do something like that yeah a nonsense password yeah it's all bullshit man no it's bullshit because you look back at it now think about this for a minute i have friends that i'm 52 almost i got friends that went to college not even the greatest college in the world cash grabs in a in a natural hostage situation exactly that's what my listener nonsense password said cash grab in a, in a, in a natural hostage situation that's exactly what it is it's essentially somebody has a gun to your head <laughs> and and they make up with the, I, I think, what do they call those people? Um, the people that there's a, there's a group of people, there's a person that makes that, that decides what things call cost at the hospital. I remember going to the hospital, he says, and he says, it's always a big secret until the bill comes. Oh, it's a secret when the bill comes, but you know exactly what's going to happen. You just call them vampires. <laughs> You know what? I, I think vampires actually stop at some point. <laughs> you you call them vampires, but vampires actually stop at some point. You could actually put some light on a vampire, <laughs> right? And when they when they suck blood from your neck, there's no interest. They don't suck your blood and go, you know what? There was not enough blood in your neck tonight. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow and I'm gonna need 10% blood interest. Because I want to suck your neck a little harder tomorrow. I'm need you gonna need you to have some more blood for me to suck from your neck. <laughs> but but why do we see why do we see what we what we see now when we literally look overseas, see other industrialized countries, very similar to ours. That's the thing about where we are in the country. We will see other countries create something, think it's cool. What's it say? It says, uh, vampires are better about repeat business and they actually <laughs> make you undead. You have a, you have a point that maybe there's something to that. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather be bitten by a vampire than having to pay a $750,000 medical bill. The funny thing about it is if we actually had health care, health insurance or universal health care or Medicare for all or whatever the hell you want to call it. Do you realize how many people's lives would not get effed up? Do you realize how many people are going bankrupt because of medical bills? Imagine if you imagine how just if we just made one change in the United States of America, just one change. And if the one change was you have universal health care. And he says uh, Medi uh, Medicare for all would be an economic boom, too. Exactly. Even if it was just something as simple as. Not having your life ruined because you <laughs> because you slipped and fell down and, and damaged yourself. And now before you before you before you were, were, were typing, I, it was it's one of those things where it costs twelve hundred bucks to ride in an ambulance on the East Coast. 
and the stunts in small indie films would get way better. Oh, you damn right. <laughs> you know, I think stuntmen might be some of the happiest people in the world because you know damn well their asses are going to the hospital all the time. <laughs> you know, but if we just didn't, if we just didn't have to pay those bills like that, I mean, I, I have no problem. Other other countries they pay, obviously, it's their taxes that are paying for uh, their taxes that are paying for it, and nobody. I mean, if you, if, if people actually when you pay taxes, if they actually used your money wisely, which they don't, people don't mind paying taxes if you're actually getting something for the taxes. You don't hear anybody complaining about lights. You don't hear anybody complaining about the roads. You don't hear anybody complaining about the firefighters, right? A typical Canadian pays less taxes than I do when I'm broke. Wow. <laughs> Where are you from? Where are you from? Says the typical Canadian pays less taxes than I do. Where are you from? Oh, you're from here. Oh, man. So they pay less taxes but get better health care. And they're right uh, they're right up there. It's not like we're they're they're right there. They're attached to us, a part of the same continent. And we haven't figured out that maybe, maybe we might want to see we see what they're doing, and maybe, just maybe, we, we might want to try that as well. I have friends from Canada that literally were saying to me, hey, man, uh, by like three to five percent. Goodness gracious. He says by, he says by, by three to five percent last time he checked. Yow. Kind of makes you kind of makes you wanted to slide up to Canada really quickly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just uh, from what I understand, people, uh, Canadians, uh, we have to get travelers insurance. Uh, when they come to the USA, from what I understand, because they know if they come down here and they break their leg, it's going to cost 15 grand or 10 grand, you know, to get their leg fixed. And I've never understood that, you know, I've never understood that, you know, because it's going to take a long time to pay off these bills. Even if you have insurance, you don't have enough insurance. You know, you don't have enough insurance to pay for the things that we uh that we need up here. We don't have enough. You know, and I never understood why that's acceptable. You know, I never understood why a person who has if you're a drug company why you would take an EpiPen and raise the price on it. You have to understand, you have to know that there are people that are either going to live or to die whether they have that thing or not. And when I've seen people normal people in their natural state, if you if say you're driving down a road and you see a car accident, People will just naturally jump. And I've done it. I've done it. I've jumped out of my car to help pull a guy out of a car. And it wasn't it wasn't like in, in the movies where you were trying to pull him out because you thought the car was going to blow up. I knew the car wasn't going to blow up. But I pulled him out of the car. And I've been in an accident, in an accident once in my life, where someone had to drag me out of a car. That's the natural state of being. But when it comes to making some money, a lot of money, a lot of money, all of a sudden, Said the president just got great medical care and a helicopter ride. <laughs> he only had to pay seven fifty in taxes. I wish I could get. If you think about the amount of money you actually paid in taxes, and he got that for seven fifty, what do you think you would have gotten if it was if it, everything was fair for the amount of taxes you had to pay? Now, if you've ever written a ten thousand dollar or twenty thousand dollar or something like that for taxes, and and uh, I'm not a rich dude, I'm just a regular dude like everybody else. But I've had some people that I knew that made a quite a bit of money and I saw what they paid in taxes. And I'm going, Jesus Christ, because that it was one of those guys that would, he made enough money where he was in a different, he was in that tax bracket where they literally take 40% of your money, it's like with 39.5% of your money in taxes. And that just means that the, 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 the current resident of the White House in 15 years has not paid as much taxes as that guy paid in that one specific year, which is, unbelievable you know i I guess i have no problem with people uh, if they if they're in a situation where they can avoid paying some taxes for you know if they want to write off something if they have equipment or something like that i have no problem with that that's that's fine but when you don't pay anything like i mean sometimes i'll be honest with you i feel guilty buying crap from amazon because i pay more taxes than amazon (laughs) you know but the when I bought the microphone that I'm speaking in right now, this microphone, which is not that much, probably costs less, I mean, probably more than the damn, 
<laughs> it's probably more than they're paying for taxes in the first place. And it absolutely astounded me, you know? You know, I mean, I, I, I'm just like everybody else. You just want you just want things to be fair. That's all you want. You don't, you know, I truly believe that every time they talk about how everybody hates rich folks, I don't hate rich people. I mean, I don't know if you guys profit to the nation's autumn. Hey, welcome, welcome to the show. I, I'm Autumn Miller. Welcome to the show. Um, I, I just I just I'm just completely astounded by the fact that people like people people don't well thank you thank you for listening people people i mean let me ask i'm mean, let me ask you guys and and because i can see you're 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 typing the notes there i'm going to assume that you guys aren't billionaires am i right in that <laughs> i guess i'm definitely not one but i'm going to assume you guys are not billionaires you can type in and tell me whether or not you're billionaires i'm going to assume you're not i if if i'm wrong i apologize but I don't, I'm not mad at billionaires. I'm not mad at rich people, you know? Um, it's just that you don't want rich people who are, I'm an American, so I supposedly can be. Well, that's the trick. <laughs> that is one of the that is one of the funniest tricks that we have in the country is that we make everybody think that they too can be billionaires like the billionaires. But if you really think about it, they don't like you either. You know, <laughs> they write all the, yeah, exactly. They, they rewrite all the laws. They rewrite the laws because they want to make sure. I mean, think about this for a second. Say you, you're sitting at home. There's a pizza you already ate. Okay. You ate, you're, you're, you're not hungry. You, you, you can eat a little bit and you take a slice of pizza. Nobody's going to get mad about that. But if you take the whole pie and then throw a slice on the floor and tell everybody else to fight for it, now you get a little bit upset. Sorry, I get a little bit upset. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to be rich just like everybody else. You want to be rich. You want to have money. But goodness gracious, great balls of fire. When it gets to the situation where, <laughs> where they have all the money. Sometimes I sometimes I when, when you see people that have that kind of money and they do give back. You know, you kind of you're like like a LeBron James with the school that he built for people. Nobody, I'm not mad at him for making the kind of money he's making. I'm not mad at a quarterback for making the kind of money. I'm not mad at famous comedians or famous actors. I'm not mad at somebody who runs a business. But all I ask for people to do is to be fair. If I ever ever get to a situation where I have that kind of money and that kind of influence, because I think that when you get money and influence at that level, I think it's your responsibility to help people. Because how much can you want? How much can you need? I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to make as much as you want, but after a certain level, how much money do you actually, was it a fab stand? I hope I didn't uh, mispronounce that. Did I Did I mispronounce that fab stand? Yeah. And uh, nonsense password said, LeBron works his ass off in a skill game. I have no hate for him. And it says the other, <laughs> he says the other ones are, the other ones, the other a-holes are born into it. <laughs> This is true. I don't even, here's the thing. I don't even get upset with people that are born into money that don't act like you know what holes, you know? Cause you'll see people, sometimes they'll, uh, they'll, they'll actually be born with a lot of money and they won't do anything bad. They'll, they'll literally help people. You'll see people from, um, how can you call it? This is my first, this is my first live. So I think you gotta, I think you gotta be on the pod bean app. If I remember correctly, because if you guys, if you can call in, that would be cool. I don't, this is literally my first time doing this. So, uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to invite people to call. I know, I know it's on the, I think it's on the Podbean app. Are you guys on the Podbean app? Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to figure out. See, every time I try to crap, where's uh, yeah? I'm trying to look for the request. I just don't. I don't see it. Where is it? Because I think it's up. Up. Um, I'm up on the. Uh, like I said, I'm actually new to this. I will accept the request. I just don't. Are you on the pod? Are you guys on the Podbean app? Let me see here. I'm trying to see. Oh, thank you, nonsense password. 
I'm trying to I'm trying to see. Like I said, I'll accept the phone call. <laughs> Come to your show and join the cult. I think I was. Uh, Autumn says, tell him to hit the number one. So I guess you got to hit the number one. I get you guys are uh, hit the number one. On the f- oh, let me see here. Hold on, let me see here. Oh, wait, maybe my maybe my screen is a little too big here. Maybe that's why. I see what's going on because I, that definitely will. Okay, I'm trying to see. From a, uh, let's see here. Let's see. I'm trying. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to see if I can. Like this is my first time doing this, and I'll try to try to get you in here. I just, uh, Autumn, you uh, you said hit the number one. I'm I'm looking here, and I'm trying to see. It says listeners to on the other side, and I'm hitting. Huh. Let me see here. Trying to accept. For those, uh, this is so weird because I I want to accept the, the, it says uh, accept call in. Yes, that's just it. I'm not even seeing a notification. I'm looking over at it. It It says guests and call ins, but I'm not seeing anything over there. I'm on the Chrome. I'm 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 at uh are you on the Chrome? I'm, yeah, I'm on Chrome. I'm on Chrome. I'm out on the app. Probably would be easier if I was on the app. I'm I was doing this as my first broadcast, episode four hundred, from the um I'm I'm doing it from the I'm doing it from the house. Doing it from the house. I don't know what the situation is. This is enter your host or guest's email. Am I am I supposed to be getting an email notification or something? Is that was going on here. So I don't think I got an email. I don't even know if I got an email notification. That's why I would. <laughs> oh, he said it's a fault with his phone. Please carry on the conversation. Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah, because I'm trying to figure out. I think he's I think he says this is his phone. Uh nonsense password. See if you can request a call in. Or one of or some one of the other people see if you can request a call in. I just want to see if it'll let me do it. Walking undead into the studio. I just want to see if I can do it because this is an interesting thing. I just want to hear what you guys think about this because I'm trying to figure. Yeah, I'm trying to see what's going on here. So, so are you guys? Are you guys? Uh, are you guys hosts of our shows as well? Are you old pros when it comes to this, when it comes to doing these live broadcasts? Are you old pros to this? Ah, so Autumn Miller. So, uh, Autumn, when you, uh, did you request the call in? Could you do that? I just want to see if it will, it will work. Okay. Yeah. Some of you guys request the call in and I'm going to just plug you in because I, I only did a test of this on, uh, on my phone before I did a test on my phone and, uh, I called in a, to a friend show and, um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything at all. Only thing I see is the uh, only thing I see is is my p- when I click on your icon, it just says profile block add admin. Oh, there we go. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay, I see nonsense password. There we go. And I'm going to connect you. All right, you're there, my friend. Hey, cool. You got it. There we go. It, it, this is just a weird thing. I'm trying. I was trying to figure out how to do this, and I couldn't see. <laughs> yeah, I get you, man. It's really weird when you first start out, and I'm very happy to help you. You can always come by my show and ask me questions. I got the biggest secular show on here. I'm always looking for people who have good shows, and I can tell you're going to be great. Why? I appreciate you, man. Especially so coming from somebody that's an old pro at this kind of thing, because. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It's, it's just a weird thing because I, whenever you listen to radio programs, regular radio programs, and uh, I've been guests on shows, but it's just really weird when you're literally 
reading at the same time and trying to figure out what yeah. the hell is going on. <laughs> I can just, I can yeah. just imagine. <laughs> you know, how long have you been doing it? Since April, and I've been a top twenty show every month, and um, I, I, I'm about to get a crown. Uh, everybody knows me here. I'm nonsense, and uh, a lot of people are going to be pissed because I never call into anybody else's shows. But I was just hopping around, man. You sound great, and I want you to to know how to use this thing because I'm always looking for uh, people with uh, with uh, good shows to kind of expand this platform because I totally dig it. And I'm going to definitely, without question, check out your show, my friend. Yeah, man, come by, join the cult. It'll be good. You know, I've always wanted to join a cult. All I'm asking you, if you got Kool Aid, <laughs> I need sugar in it. <laughs> It's not. It's not Kool Aid. We have. We have very. Or it's not. It's not a that type of cult. We have very agreeable rules. So okay, I'm kind of disappointed. I was kind. I was kind of hoping it was that kind of cult. Now you're ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hop off, man. But I just wanted to make sure you got it. You seems like you got the whole thing figured out. Now there's a very important thing too. You gotta understand how to hang up on people because after you're around Podbean for a little bit, you're gonna need to do it sometimes. Uh, okay. okay. So, so see if you can see if you can hang up on me. Okay. Let me see. We going here. We do this, and oh, there we go. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate. It. See, that is what I'm talking about. You build a community. You meet good people, and then you get yourself another good show to listen to because that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen to your show. And um, <laughs> it's, it's really weird. I'm just hanging up on people. But, but what I want to ask, let me just ask you guys this though. Cause this is just a, this is just a weird thing. If you, I'm, I'm 52 going on this year. And, and, and you guys look, some of you guys look kind of young. Um, I don't know whether or not you've ever, Heck, we were talking about medical bills and things of that nature. When you have you, has any one of you ever actually had to stay over in the hospital? You might have been, you guys might be too young for that actually to actually have to worry about, uh, <laughs> to worry about actually, uh, spending time in a hospital and going through those. You're 23, 23. So you're so young, you may not, you might, you might, you might heal right after you get hurt. <laughs> you might. You might actually cut your finger, look at it, and watch it healing in front of you, <laughs> you know. But this is just an interesting thing, and I try to figure out um, this whole thing. How about I want to thank you guys for listening to this? It's just that I wanted to come on here because this is my episode. This is my four hundredth episode. I've been doing this podcasting thing for a long, long time, and um, it's just been a it's, it's been a wonderful experience. I've met really, really good people, and um, I consider you guys. Uh, <laughs> you're upset because you come so late. Well, you know, I, I this is just my first my first live broadcast. I'm going to do it often, um, and it's just it's just a it's just a weird thing. It's just a weird thing. So this is a this is an interesting evening because when I when I turned on this, the only thing I could think of, hey, the People's Punisher, what's going on, my friend? You know. You having a good evening too, my friend? Because the only thing I'm thinking about, what we're talking about, I, basically what we're talking about was I I had a, I was complaining because the, of some of my friends across, on, on the other side of the pond, my friends in, in Canada, my friends in, my friends in Canada, my friends in the UK were telling me about how they don't really have medical bills the same way that we have them here in the United States. And I started to tell them about my recent time in a hospital and uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good now. Uh, <laughs> I had a recent I had a recent trip to the hospital. Uh, I had to ride in an ambulance. I have not been in an ambulance in a long period of time. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know if any of you have ever been in an ambulance. I hope you never have to ride in an ambulance because even if you don't feel that you feel bad enough to get into the ambulance because you called them, and I it never one k. Oh, you got a one thousand dollar bill? Eesh, yeah, mine cost twelve hundred bucks. If you <laughs> Medical bills are different. Yeah, across the pond, they they were they were they were they felt bad, and they were telling me how they, you know, they they go into the hospital. It, the, it when it comes to the the bills, he says. Uh, so you mean there is improper calculation of bills in Canada and other countries apart from the United States? <laughs> well, I don't know what the calculations are because, quite frankly, those people don't get the bill. They really don't. Um, he actually 
he he went into the hospital and he actually the only money that changed hands when he went into the hospital was they gave him some money to catch a cab. He didn't need it, but he gave him money to catch a cab. He never had to worry about insurance. He never had to worry about the hospital bills. In the United States, if you're riding in the back of an ambulance, you already know the second you get in the ambulance, it's already going to be twelve hundred bucks. Twelve hundred bucks just to get into the ambulance. You know, and you're sitting in the back there and <laughs> you're sitting in the back of the of the ambulance or not sitting, you're laying back there and they've got, they're taping things to you. They're giving you EKGs. They're shooting things in your arm. You hear them talking about you like you're not there. You know, you hear the, I remember hearing the guy say to the lady, oh, we got a guy, 50, no, one year old male, five foot eight. Uh, but he's coming in the hospital. He's coming into the size of that. And, and all I could think about was, oh man, it's bad enough. I'm in an ambulance and it's bad enough. You're trying to figure out whether you're going to die or not. But in the middle of thinking about whether you're going to die or not, uh oh what's my job uh i'm a comedian and i do podcasts that's walking dead walking undead asking that question comedian and podcaster been doing well been doing the podcasting for seven been a comedian for a long time oda miller says my cousin drove himself to the hospital had breathing problems ended up oh needing a pacemaker put in goodness gracious goodness gracious where uh walking undead where do i live uh new jersey um autumn i'm an indian guy don't mind saw you speak a little fast for me oh i'm sorry you know what um vinny and he drove 30 miles it happened this week autumn miller's relative 30 oh my goodness a pacemaker uh as far as uh, vinny is concerned everybody on the east coast uh speaks pretty much at this speed so i'm sorry I'll, i'll slow down a little bit if you're if you're from the east coast uh philadelphia new jersey new york um, places like that, Boston, you you speak very very quickly. It's a north north northeast thing. Uh, he drove Autumn Miller's relative drove thirty miles to the hospital, and you oh goodness, so there were heart problems and thirty my mi- oh my god. So that, that that's oh gee thirty miles that's oh that's a forty minute ride in the car. Oh my goodness! That could be as much as an hour in the car going thirty miles, Virginia, West Virginia to Virginia. Oh, gee! Now think, now think about this. Autumn's relative had to drive thirty miles to the hospital and ended up having a pacemaker put in. Think about the thought process there when you alone didn't even ah uh, didn't even have somebody riding with. Oh my good! How are they? Are they doing okay now, Autumn? Because I'm just. Yeah, so you mean they don't get bills, they just pay money in other countries. Yeah, well, what happened? Well, uh, well you have you get the bill and then you pay money. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Autumn. She says so so. I'm hoping to hoping the best for your relative because I, I know what that feels like. I had relatives that were in nursing homes, and essentially, and essentially what happened was, uh, and Vinny, yeah, they give you the bill and then you gotta pay. Um, essentially what happened was, hey, walking undead. Um, when when you when you get into the hospital, they were in the, they were in a nursing home and their bills were. I had one person that had a bill that my aunt had a bill. Her bill was like a million dollars, and I'm not saying a million dollars to exaggerate. It was literally a million dollars, um, you know. And she was you no, know, and she was in a situation where you know we knew pretty much that. And my other two uncles, they were in a situation when they were in the hospital. One of them, he, we knew he wasn't coming out. I mean, it was, I was the one that drove him to all of his hospital visits. I'm the one that took him to chemotherapy. I went and picked up his medicines and things of that nature. And every time I took him to the hospital, I literally, I'm not even kidding about this. It freaked me out because we were very close. And I literally was thinking every time I took this, this brother to the hospital, I thought, I was, he was not coming out and it happened maybe seven or eight times. And obviously the last, obviously the final time he stayed in and never came out. But I just think about, man, that, I'm still thinking about Autumn's relative having a drive in a car with obvious chest pain. And man, the only thing I could think about is, is that it's, it's a, it's a travesty and a tragedy to me when people are literally sitting at home feeling an ailment they have an ailment and they're literally thinking, huh, should I, 
I mean, the, the simple fact that you can literally sit there and think about the fact that I don't want to have this bill. <laughs> and, you know, because because if you if you were in a situation like I was in the situation, as it turns out, my 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 uh, ride to the ambulance, it was not life threatening. And she said, especially senior citizens. Exactly. Like my uncles, my uncles were senior citizens when I took them to the hospital and I would have to see them. But you're literally sitting there thinking, well, this hurts a little bit. It'll go away. How many times do you think that we've had senior citizens found in their homes by relatives? And the only reason that they were found in the home by relative was because the person was afraid to make that phone call because they were already living on a budget that was too tight for them. And they didn't want to get that $1,200 ambulance ride. They didn't want to get that $25,000 half a million dollar bill. And they sat at home and they passed away because they were afraid of the $1,200 ambulance ride. That's the thing that astounds me, you know? And I often wonder, when you look at the political leaders, you sit there and you're going, you guys get health care. You guys get health care. You know? I guarantee you there's no senator, there's no congressperson that has to deal with what Autumn's relative had to deal with. It said, happened to this. We found my husband's grandma dead in January. He didn't want to build. Do you see that you, you guys that were listening? See what I'm saying? Autumn understands exactly what I'm talking about. I'm, and maybe some of you have to deal with that too. Her husband's grandma died in January. Didn't want the bill. Now, how ridiculous is that? You know, so, you know, so I sit back and I mean, like, even right now, I have the bill right in front of me. <laughs> I have the bills right in front of me and you know and as it turns out here's the funny thing if i had just quote waited it out if i had just waited it out i wouldn't have this fifteen thousand dollar bill i wouldn't have this twelve hundred dollar um uh ambulance bill right it wouldn't have happened now granted obviously you don't want to play around with that you don't want to play around with that, but goodness gracious, grace under fire. So I just, I just, I just wonder about that. And you have a special needs child. Don't get me started on that. She says, that's what Autumn says. <laughs> well, I don't have, I don't have any children, but I do have a special needs relative, nonverbal. Oh yeah. And you know what the funny thing, you know, what's interesting and and for everybody listening, maybe you you have someone that's special needs in your life as well. This is something that people that don't have don't live with someone with special needs, or 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 one of the caretakers of someone with special needs, or the caretaker with someone with special needs, and I am one of them. Is that you literally, especially if they're nonverbal, or if they or if they're not really high functioning, you literally walk into a room or to a house with them. And your eyes literally sweep the room left, right, up, down. And all you're thinking about is what peril is in this room that I have to get rid of? What is in this, you know, the same way you would, would you know, and you're going, oh, okay, wait a minute. Okay, uh, wait a minute. He likes sharp objects. Got to get those pins out of here. Get the knives out of here. Get them. I mean, he's not. He's not a violent person. She's not a violent person. But she'll 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 she'll, she'll, she'll do something. You know. Uh, uh, it's like when it's very similar to. And I'm not equating my my special needs relatives with children, even though some of them you know have that level of functioning. Because I don't want to be insulting to someone that I love or to anyone. But if you have a child and you walk into a room, I'm not a parent. But when I would take care of my little nephews when they were kids or my little cousins, you walk into the room and the first thing you think is, okay, that table's got sharp edges. We got to, we got to watch out for that. You look on the floor, there's a penny on the floor. Get that up. Nope. Nope. Get the penny up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't have any plug. You don't have any plugs for your electric sockets. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> you know? And it is the same thing, you know, <laughs> I, st- I, st- I still remember one of my nephews was at the top of the steps. And I was stopping two other young ones from murdering each other. Because if you have kids, whether they're your kids or you're like, in my, in my case, ne- nieces and nephews, and they're, they're all within a year of each other or a year and a half of each other. So they're close in age. And if you have children that are close in age, 
their job in life is to kill the other children. <laughs> that's that's their goal in life. It's like, how can I injure everyone that kind of looks like me and is roughly my size? That's what I got to do today. Yeah, there's something sharp. I think I'm going to stick it in something that has electric coming out of it. Hey, there's something heavy. I'm going to throw it towards the television. Hey, so my nephews are at the top of the steps trying to ride an open umbrella down the steps. My steps have metal. (laughs) They have metal. the, The banisters are metal. If you get caught in the banisters at my house, and a, you, you, I mean, especially if you're a child, you're going to have a broken arm. Or if your head gets caught in there, you know what's going to happen. I literally, and this is what happens. I literally ran across the room, j- jumped over my couch to the point where I was standing on the top of my couch, reached my left hand out and caught both of them with my left hand because they were both, and, I, and I'm sitting there holding them. It was like that old OJ commercial with the... <laughs> When he's running through the airport or uh, or like one of those Michael Jordan things where you jump in the air with the basketball in one hand, then you switch the basketball in the other hand and laid it up. If you asked me to do that before they were falling down the steps, I would have never even thought that I could be possible, possibly be able to do that. But I saw those two dopes coming down the steps and I caught them both with my left hand. Granted, my shoulder hurt for six weeks, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> and here's the thing because we're talking about medical bills. My shoulder hurt, hurt so badly. But even then I was like, nah, because this is a while ago. Back then the hospital ride, uh, ambulance rides were only like $400. I was like, nah, nah, nah. I'm 22 at the time. So it was 30 years ago almost. Ah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, I'm not riding. Nah, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to the hospital. Not going to do it. So this is just it's just a, uh, an amazing thing that that that's what life is like right now for all of us is we literally have to sit back and think in terms of you know what do I do if I get sick you know you know what do I do if I get injured you know because if you go if you went to college you know what that's like you know what it's like when you went to college and especially if you're somebody that went to college that and you had did anybody in anybody uh any of any any of you guys go to college and have to pay for it all yourself have to work that that job you know work at the pizza place you put yourself through school maybe your parents helped out a little bit or maybe they couldn't help out the people's punisher like to call in okay hold on i got you people's punisher there we go how you doing brother how you doing people's punisher called in i'm doing good doing, doing, doing good and you know what, you know, I was hearing what you were saying, you know, it's like so true, like about that, like the whole uh, ambulance bills and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's a bloody shame that it costs that damn much just to transport someone and people rather risk, risk their lives driving themselves and get an ambulance. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's, it, it's, it, that's the problem with this nation of capitalism, being in a capitalist country is that. They want to milk you for every damn dollar they can. Even a dying man, I'm like he's pretty sick people. If you ask me, I actually saw my ne- I actually saw my uncle's um, medical bills, and I looked at some of my medical bills, and I I saw what an amp. This is not even a joke. I saw what an aspirin cost, and I'm going. Much? I could buy I could buy uh, ten bottles of aspirin, ten bottles of aspirin, for what one cost in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting there going, so I'm going, so so let me get this straight. This aspirin costs seventy five dollars. Is that what you're telling me? This one aspirin right. costs seventy five dollars. And and it's just it that's the thing I never understood. It's just that you I, I like I said, I want doctors, nurses, I want them to get paid. I have them in my family. No, not doctors, mm-hmm. but nurses. I have them in my family. I want them to make money. I want them to pay. I mean, they study hard. I've actually, with a couple of friends that were going to the school, I helped them with, well, as best as I could, you know, to study. I want them to make money because let's be honest with you. You know, in many cases, being a doctor, being a nurse, that's not just a job for a lot of these people. That's a calling for them. You know, a lot of right. the people, I know, they, they want to do that. They love it. They, they want to help people their entire lives. That's what they wanted. So it's not even them because they're not the ones that make the bills. They just come in, apply their art, 
and try to help and they go about they don't write they don't make the prices so when i say these things i just want to make sure everybody that's listening understands that this has nothing to do with the doctors or the nurses they're just doing their jobs it has nothing to do with the people in the ambulance because they do fantastic work we i mean i, I mean I, hold on, i'm gonna do this right now so everybody that's the first responder the doctors and nurses and people of nature that, i'm gonna give you that but it's the people that make the money. Like you was, like you were saying, you said it's a capitalist society. And mm-hmm. the simple fact that we could see people in their absolutely worst position when they're the weakest, the, you know, they, they, they need us the most. You, they got tubes down their nose and there's somebody someplace in an office going, yeah, I bet I can get more money out of that person. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's a sick motherfucker who wants to make more money off a person than actually do their job, what they went to school for and help them. And, you know, that's the problem with the medical field these days. They're so fascinated or so hooked on finding treatment, they forget about cures. And they're just milking people over and over and over uh, with treatments. I'm like, really? Is how the, explain to me, is how is it that we find a cure for or we found uh, a vaccine for COVID nineteen, so damn fast, mm-hmm. but Lord, Lord, you know they they're taking God knows what reason why they're taking so damn long to find cures for cancer, but yet they could find a vaccine like that for COVID nineteen. Do you remember do you, uh, there was a there was a I think Chris Rock did a bit about that. He said that they're not going to cure it; they're going to find a way for you to live with it. Yep, because they really had their pockets full of cash than be. Like everybody else, because if they find cures for everything, we all become immune to everything. Doctors aren't going to get paid as much. Pharmacists mm-hmm. aren't going to get paid as much. They're going to be, uh, they're going to be, uh, be getting uh, less than what they're normally getting. So they rather get treatments. Like I said, again, like I said, mm-hmm. sick people in this world. Yeah, uh, Autumn Miller, who she says they're working on a vaccine last year in her city with Fort Detrick. She says. She says um, I, I'm, you know what the funny thing is, and I, I'm, I know this is going to sound weird that I'm saying this, but if they, <laughs> even if they found a way for us to live with it, it would probably even be an improvement. But here's the here's the problem. Just like anything else, once you start, say, say they found a cure for cancer, right, mm-hmm. and it cost it cost um fifty dollars a month, right? Oh no, no, knock it down. Say it's five bucks a month. You take this pill five bucks a month and I can cure your cancer. And everybody starts taking it and all of a sudden there's no cancer. You know what's going to happen right after that. Now it's 10 bucks a month and I can cure your cancer. $15 a month. I can cure $20 a month. I can cure your okay. cancer. You know, mm-hmm. we'll just keep going up. You know, and the next thing you know, we'll be right back. It's like, like, um, think about this. And then, um, like with the uh, cable, cable company, cable companies right now, we all cut the cords on the cable companies and we all went off and got Netflix, Hulu, this, that. And we're all going, because I had an uncle that paid like $250, $300 a month for cable and uh, everybody cut their cords. Do you notice what happened? Now, all of a sudden, every cable company, every TV station, everybody wants 15 bucks a month to watch the stuff we were watching before. So even if you get rid of cable, you got to buy 85 streaming services and guess what you wind up paying? The same amount of money you were paying when the cable companies are running everything. So as it is, it's all about the money. It's all about the money. Um, Let's see. Uh, and he, Autumn Miller says, look it up on YouTube, The Secret of Fort Detrick. What in the blue heck is that? You know what? You need to call in Autumn. <laughs> you need to call in because I want to hear I want to hear your voice. Uh, People's Punisher. Where are. Uh, let's see what happened here. OK. Uh, Biochemist, the biggest lab. And, oh, OK. So. So what I'm saying is, is uh, Vinny two Vinny two or three entered the live studio. Is an army base or something like that? A biochemist, huh? Okay, a people's punisher. Uh, uh, kind of lost you there. 
your uh, your signal went out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say thank you to you, my brother. And uh, keep it stop that there. So uh, I lost your signal that people's punished. I didn't cut off. I didn't. Uh, yes, I'm the same guy. <laughs> yeah, no, but you have a different uh, you have a different Abby. But I noticed the Vinny part. So um, anthrax. They were working on a- a- autumn says they were working. On an anthrax cure? Oh, an- oh Jesus! Well, if you go into one of the bio the biochemists' lab, they always have the um, you know they they have the scariest crap in the world there. The scariest crap in the world is in those places. You never know exactly. Uh, I'm just wondering what happened. You, you, you know that I would guard. I hope, I hope those things are guarded like Fort Knox, <laughs> because if any of that stuff gets out, everybody's in deep. You know what? Everybody's in deep. You know what? They got flagged last year. It was unsafe. Of course it was. You know, those things are always going to be unsafe. And um, so so what I wanted to say to everybody, uh, this is um, my first live stream. Um, this, is the, this is actually episode 400 of my podcast. If I put this up, I'm probably, I'm just going to enjoy this. Um, and... Uh, I gotta, I gotta step off now. I just want to say to everybody that's listening to me right now, every last one of you, I appreciate you coming in. I appreciate you. We'll do this again. Uh, much love to everybody. I really appreciate because this is literally my first live stream. And as it turns out, what happens? Super cool people call in, <laughs> and that's what I, that's what I think of you guys. In fact, I'm, let me give me give you this. This is this is for you guys. Ashley, I'm gonna give that to you. This is for you guys, and I just want to say thank you very much. And I will, we will do this again. Much love to you all, Autumn. I, and uh, hope uh, hope your your relative is doing much much better because I know that's a scary scary thing. Much love to you all, and I will see you guys again next time. Okay, take care.